Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat. You're watching I again, and today we're checking out the new Samsung Galaxy M30. So let's quickly get started. <laughs> So Samsung Galaxy M30 comes after the success of the M10 and the M20 for Samsung. The M30 also becomes the cheapest phone available today with a Super AMOLED display starting at a price of 14,990 for the 4GB plus 64GB variant. The phone is also available in a 6GB plus 128GB variant for 17,990 rupees. Right off the bat, if you're planning on buying this phone and if you do have the additional money, I would recommend that you go in for the 6GB plus 128GB variant. Let's quickly cut through the packaging. The first thing inside the box is yet another box which includes some documentation. This also has uh, the warranty certificate and the SAR information in the quick start guide. The SAR numbers seem to be really low for the Samsung Galaxy M30, which is a good sign. Next up in the box is the phone itself. I'm gonna place it to the side for the time being. And if I go further in, I can see directly a USB to USB type C cable, which is fantastic. Something that I think was missing in phones under the 15,000 rupee price tag. The phone finally has USB type C, which is excellent. And uh, now we are finally gonna see movement towards that direction. You also get a wall charger. Now this is a fast charging wall charger. You get upwards of 15 watt of charging on this. The last thing inside the box is the SIM ejector tool. I'm going to now quickly look at the phone itself, remove it from the packaging. Right off the bat, you can see that the color on the back of the M30 gives it a much more premium feel than when you look at the M10 and the M20. Still a plastic back, not a big fan of that, but it is durable. So that is definitely a good thing. We don't see a camera bump or a fingerprint sensor bump. So everything is completely flush with the back, which looks nice. Now, if we move over to the front, this is where all the magic is happening. We do get a Super AMOLED display this is a 6.4 inch display with a 2280 by 1080 pixel pixel resolution giving it a 19 is to 9 aspect ratio and a 394 pixel per inch pixel density. The company is claiming a 90% plus screen to body ratio and if you look at the bottom there is a considerable chin but it doesn't really interfere with the overall look and feel of the device which looks quite premium. On the top of the display is a teardrop notch which houses the front facing camera. This camera is a 16 megapixel camera which does support HDR and can capture 1080p video at 30 frames per second. At the bottom of the device you will find a standard 3.5mm headphone jack, the USB type-c port, the microphone and the speaker. On the right is the power button along with the volume buttons. On the top a dedicated secondary noise cancellation microphone and on the left is the SIM tray, this long tray with Two SIM card slots and a dedicated micro SD card slot which can take up to 512 gigabyte of storage. So if you do get the 128 gigabyte variant, you can get upwards of 600 gigabyte of storage on your device. If you flip over to the back, you'll find that this phone has three cameras, a 13 megapixel f1.9 main camera with face detect autofocus. There is also a 5 megapixel 12mm ultra wide sensor which gives you those nice wide shots along with the final 5 megapixel sensor which is for depth sensing and it'll give you the live focus capability. The phone can capture 1080p video at 30 frames per second. Now once you're setting up the phone, it'll ask you if you want to install some additional applications which is good, which means that it does not come with any bloatware. You do have a couple of preloaded applications including Daily Hunt and Amazon which I was easily able to uninstall. There are also still Microsoft apps that are preloaded. You can disable them, but you can't completely uninstall them. The phone is still on Android 8 out of the box, which is somewhat of a disappointment, but it does get the navigation gestures and Android 9 is expected in the coming month. So somewhat still okay. Now running everything is an Exynos 7904 octa-core chipset with two cores at 1.8 gigahertz and six cores at 1.6 gigahertz. You also get the Mali G71 MP2 GPU. The phone has a 5000 milliamp hour battery and uh, the fingerprint sensor on the back is quite easy to set up and also quite responsive in unlocking the device. You can also 
lock folders and apps and also individually lock certain things within the phone using the fingerprint sensor which is great the phone also has Dolby Atmos sound so if you plug in headphones uh, you can get really good quality audio from the phone itself the phone has your usual suspects including a blue light filter the ability to duplicate apps but overall this phone is gonna get attention due to the fact that it has a super AMOLED display and a really good price point along with a 5000 milliamp hour battery available in a under 15,000 rupee price bracket. Now we'll be testing this phone in depth in the coming days so stay tuned for that. If you have any particular questions or queries regarding this phone do let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video guys don't forget to smash that like button hit the subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team Aigyan. This has been Bharat Nagpal. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hesitation, hesitation. I don't know what I want, I don't know what I need, but I feel a loss of balance when I think of you and me. I don't know what I want, I don't know what I need, but I feel there's something missing, someone's missing.